For a long time, I believed that if I only became the best romantic choice for women, then they would fall for me. The problem with that plan was that it was based on what I believed made a man the best romantic choice for women. And as it turned out, I had no freaking clue what that was. Hi, my name is Julian. I'm one of the co-founders of Reconnected. And in today's video, I want to talk about rational versus emotional attraction. Let me ask you something. With the resources that you have available right now, what could you improve about yourself so that women would find you more attractive and would want to flirt with you and would want to be close to you and would want to hook up with you? Take a moment to think about it. All right, thought about it? Well, maybe you had answers like, you know, maybe I could learn how to play the guitar or maybe you could become a skilled cook or a dancer. Or what if you spoke a really sexy foreign language like French or Italian? Or what if you developed an impeccable sense for fashion and styling and only wore designer clothes that fit you like a glove? Well, that's the thought process I went through. And to me, the logic was completely sound. Women like musicians. If I become a musician, women will like me too. Women like a guy who dresses well. So if I become the next Karl Lagerfeld, they will like me too. Women like men who can cook. So if I learn how to cook the best risotto ever, women will like me too. So I started to work on myself like a maniac to develop all of these skills. But guess what? None of it made even the slightest difference. Because even though I have managed to learn a bunch of attractive skills, it didn't dawn on me that all I did was become the logical, the rational best choice for women. I was the guy that made women think that he was attractive, rather than the guy who women felt attracted to. Before I talk about the opposite of rational attraction, which is emotional attraction, and how you can build that, let's talk a little bit about other forms of rational attraction that are really common. Picture the situation. You're traveling through Australia and you're thousands of miles away from home and you head into this pub and there you meet a group of young people and you get to talking with them. As it turns out, one of the women in that group, who also happens to be really attractive, grew up in the same area that you grew up in. What are the odds, right? Naturally, since you have so much in common, the two of you start a conversation and you get to talking and turns out you even know some of the same people. Great rapport there. If you think at all like I used to think, then this whole situation seems like a romantic home run, right? A situation like that can almost seem like fate, you know, like some higher power is finally rewarding for all your hard work on yourself and, and in the area of romance. But in reality, it's only rational attraction. The fact that the two of you have a ton in common is awesome and it's a great benefit. But if there's only that, there's not gonna be any connection between the two of you. There needs to be emotional attraction too, or else the other person is not gonna say like, oh, I'm gonna sleep with that guy who is totally unattractive to me and I feel nothing towards him, but he grew up in the same area as I, so I'm gonna spread my legs for him. It's the exact same thing as with all these skills that I talked about before. It makes you a very good choice on paper. It is the logical, great choice. Oh, so beautiful. They didn't know each other, even though they grew up in the same area and then they met thousands of miles away from home. How romantic. But in reality, that is meaningless. Commonalities are nice to have. It's like the skills. It's a great bonus if you have emotional attraction already. But by itself, it's worthless. Rational attraction that's based on commonalities and rapport is extremely common. There are many different examples. It could be that you speak the same language in a foreign country. It could be that she is a mom and you're great with kids. It could be that she has a cute little puppy and you're awesome with all animals. It could be that you went to the same school or you come from the same town or you work the same weird job, whatever it is commonalities and rapport are not strong enough to build emotional attraction by themselves. All right, let's get to the interesting stuff now. Emotional attraction and how to build it with another person. So emotional attraction is all about how you make another person feel. It can be triggered in a variety of ways. So, you know, through touch, through pheromones, through body language, through behavior, through your, the tone of your voice, 
through humor, confidence, vulnerability is a really big one. You see, all these things are not that enticing to talk about just because they're not as practical as telling someone, hey, just go to the gym five times a week, develop six pack apps and women are gonna want you. Even though that's total bullshit and that's not true and I'm living proof for that. Emotions are also weird and sometimes difficult to understand. For example, it's much better usually to elicit a negative emotion in a person than to trigger no emotion whatsoever. Like the worst situation, especially in romance, is the middle. It's when you stay in that weird gray area where people are just indifferent about you. Why is that? Why is it better to trigger a negative emotion than no emotion whatsoever? Because to fall in love, people need to have a mental image of you. You can't fall in love with another person if you don't have a mental image of them. So if you don't think about another person, then there can't be any chance for love. So even though a negative emotion seems like a worse outcome than just staying in the neutral zone, in the middle, you know, in that gray area where people don't think negatively or positively about you. Well, in reality, even if someone feels a negative emotion towards you, they're gonna think about you a lot. They're gonna be like, oh, that asshole. Why did he say that? He's such an arrogant prick. And we have all seen it countless times in movies. And maybe you've also seen it in real life. The woman who is a real sweetheart and theoretically she'd be so happy with any of these nice guys that all want her, but she still picks the asshole that every other guy knows is gonna break her heart. And we know the rest of the situation. And still she chooses him. And the only reason for that is because he is able to trigger an emotional response in her. And emotions are always exciting. You know, an emotional response, even if it's a roller coaster ride, is exciting. It makes us feel like we're alive, we're living, we're going through this, this thing called life and we're not just wasting it. We're not just letting the days go by. At least it's exciting. The worst thing is when you're with someone that you're indifferent about. Everything is boring with a person like that. You don't feel supported. You don't feel anything towards them. Of course, negative emotions don't always necessarily lead to romance and, and love and marriage and all that stuff. But at least they give you a chance when no emotion gives you zero chance. And I'm the perfect proof of that. I was a piano playing virgin with a six pack, even though I worked as a photographer and was surrounded by gorgeous women all day. And nothing, nothing could fix that situation until I learned how to elicit an emotional response in women and try to attract them on an emotional level rather than a rational level. And once I did that, all the skills that I had learned, all the other forms of rational attraction came in so handy for me because they boosted my attractiveness even more. But now I wasn't trying to attract them on and become the best guy on paper, but I actually managed to attract them on an emotional level and then had all these other great things going for me as well. So I really encourage you that you take action and work on attracting people on an emotional level. So that brings me to the question, how does one learn how to trigger emotional attraction in others? Well, one of my favorite ways to train it, and we do this all the time with our coaching clients, is a little exercise that's super simple that I like to call avoid the middle. And it really is as simple as it sounds. Whenever you talk to women, try to avoid that middle zone, that safe gray area that I talked about earlier. I'll give you an example to illustrate it all a little bit better. So let's say a woman you like talks about raisins and like how much she loves raisins and she would put raisins in everything and they're just so delicious and yummy and blah, blah, blah. You on the other hand are a raisin hater. Shame on you, by the way, raisins are delicious. A lot of guys, especially if they like a girl in a situation where she says, yeah, I love raisins and they hate raisins, would try to be diplomatic and not like outright say, what well, I hate them, they're disgusting. They would just go ahead and say something diplomatic like, I guess sometimes they're okay. But exactly that is what's gonna prevent you from triggering emotional attraction. What you need to do is speak your mind more, be much more open and direct and outright about what you think is awesome in life, about your beliefs, your dreams, your aspirations, your values, and so on. All of that stuff is gonna trigger emotions in others. So in this situation, for example, you could respond with something like, ugh, raisins, they look like fully sucked ticks. How can anyone like that stuff? Is that a polite thing to say? No, 
Is that the best possible thing anyone could say to an attractive woman in that situation? No. Is that a statement that will win you many friends? Hell no. But it's a great exercise if you want to practice how to make women feel rather than think. To end this video, I want to tell you about what happens if you follow the rational attraction route for too long. Well, because if you work on yourself so hard, and especially if you have done that over years, then you get a feeling of when's my turn, right? When do I deserve to be loved? When do I deserve to have all these crazy sexual experiences? When do I deserve to have someone by my side who wants to cuddle with me and who wants to kiss me and who wants to stroke my hair? But you know that then conflicts with reality, with the results that you get in real life. And you, you get this feeling of, is there something really wrong with me that I don't even notice and that no one tells me about? Furthermore, it's easy to start resenting women because, you know, they always pick these other guys that are way worse choices than you, that treat them shitty. Like, what, what's going on with these women? Are they, they stupid for always choosing these guys? Do they want to be hurt? Are they masochists or what's going on there? And eventually, after this frustration and also resentment for women get together, you, you kind of start to believe like there must be some sort of, of secret skill after all that you can learn. You just got to figure out who knows that skill, who can teach it to you, where you can learn it, and then you're going to be fine. It's just there must be this secret trick that so many guys know and you don't. And that's how you end up trying to become a pickup artist.